All right, folks, listen up. You know this artificial intelligence stuff that's taking everything over? You're sitting there. I'm sitting here. We're scratching our heads trying to figure out how do we fit into this brave new world. Well, guess what? I'm going to break it down for you today. I'm talking about a career as an AI automation engineer. The demand for AI automation engineers is about to go through the roof. And this really isn't just one career path, but it's an entire industry that's about ready to explode. It doesn't matter what your personality type is. It doesn't matter what your skills are. You don't need a PhD. You don't even need to know how to code. There is a place for everybody in this new circus of AI, and that's what I want to prove to you today. So buckle up, buddy, because this is like a career buffet, and it's all you can eat. You know what's great about all this is it's a brand new playground. It's like the wild, wild west, but with computers instead of cowboys. There are no so-called experts out there. Everybody's just trying to figure this out as we go along. So the gap between Joe Schmo and Mr. Know-it-all is as thin as it's ever going to be. And don't go running off in the middle of the video. You want to stick around to the end because there's some juicy tidbits back there, some key milestones that you want to follow as you break into this mind-boggling world of AI. This is the future of business. It's up to you, it's up to me. It's scary as hell, but let's jump into this mess and see if we can figure it out. All right, so getting into this now, the first thing you're wanna, gonna wanna think about as an AI automation engineer is getting immersed and finding places to stay up to date with this news. These can be Twitter lists, these can be email lists, these can be YouTube channels. There's an amazing uh, tool that I use called Pocket Tube that helps me organize all the different YouTube channels that I subscribe to and that I love. And there's also a new tool called Alpha Feed that is allowing you to curate your different AI news channels so you can stay up to date on whatever very specific component of this new economy you want to uh, stay involved with. So these are a few of the different email lists and Twitter uh, folks that I follow. Stick around for the end to the end of this video. I'll show you how to get a complete list of everything that I am following. The second step here is just understanding workflows. So to automate workflows, you're going to kind of need to understand what they are. So thinking about auditing your business or the, or the company that you work for, or even just the department that you work for, getting a feel for the org chart, what each role is accountable for, and understanding the processes that each role uses to accomplish those duties. Uh, you're going to want to think about project management and execution. So, you know, figuring out what is available to audit is one, uh, what is available to automate is one step of the puzzle, but then getting it implemented is another step. You know, these leaders are busy and figuring out how you're going to get uh, on their radar. They may be excited about a project initially, but then they may not be able to test, you know, have time to test it or have time to oversee it. So that those people skills are going to be very, very valuable as well. It's not just for coders. I have this quote here, familiarity with the problem outweighs technical ability. So again, if you are struggling to figure out how to tap into this new economy, uh, really understanding these, these different workflows, understanding the problems that they're causing these leaderships and being uh, influential enough to get the job done, is it going to be a big part of this as well? So then, you know, determining what tasks are suitable for automation. Um, what are most, uh, the biggest opportunities for efficiency? There's been a ton of work in this area and I have a ton of resources I wanna share with you at the end of the video. Uh, don't reinvent the wheel here. A lot of folks have figured this out and I don't think many AI people have caught on to the fact that automation has been happening for a long time before, you know, chat GPT and there's a lot that can be learned from that. Going to think about the different input and output uh, of, of these different processes. So what processes require an in, a spreadsheet on the input and a spreadsheet on the output or are involved in databases or JSON files, CSV or XML type files uh, are pretty obvious, but even just email and different chat uh, type technology is very possible now with chat GPT. From there, you're getting into deploying the automation. So this is the prototyping, the testing, and the deployment of whatever automation process you're building. And all of this can be done with low code or no code solutions. And I'm gonna get into that, a few of those in a second that you might wanna check out. But first I wanna dive into how any personality type can apply themselves to 
this new economy. So if you're an analytical type, I have the Myers-Briggs um, initials here for different personality types. I kind of vacillate between the analytical and the pragmatic. So analytical types are maybe good at audit auditing the organizational chart and determining, you know, what are the suitable tasks for automation. Then there's the programmatic types. So this is similar, but could be more related to project planning and management of these of these automation projects. Innovative folks, you might be really focused on exploring new ideas. So really keeping up with those trends, focusing on that research component of exploring new ideas and how they can be implemented in different workflows. If you're a people oriented person, I think those are the people that are struggling the most with this new technology. And there is a huge value to being able to get these projects implemented. Like I mentioned earlier, the leaders of these different companies are very busy and you know they may be excited about a project initially, but that may really wane over time. So these people oriented folks can use their collaboration and communication skills to get the job done, to influence these leaders to actually spend the time to implement these uh, processes. This is a great skill set that you know the more technical folks may not have. Adaptable types, these are the folks maybe are interested in the low code or no code solutions, like weaving together these different platforms and blending them to create some amazing automation possibilities. And there's the hands-on type. This comes to mind that these might be your coders. These might be the people that are really building and prototyping um, some of these uh, tools from scratch. Another way to look at this is what are your natural interests and skills? This economy is going to be turned on its head, so you might as well land somewhere that is naturally um, that's natural to your, uh, what you love to do and who you are as a person. So if you're just a curious person and have a love of learning, you might want to focus on that research component of staying up to date with all the newest trends. If you're more into communication and project management, uh, your job might be to collaborate with different subject matter experts on different project requirements and building out what, uh, an automation system might look like. Um, if you're a use case expert in uh, automation, you know, you're going to have a pretty easy time of this. So really just think about ways to quickly identify automatable tasks. Obviously, if you have some AI expertise already, if you are, um, you know, already knowledgeable at LLMs and how different custom knowledge bases work, you might want to just really focus on, on that zone and, and not get distracted by all the new shiny things that are coming out. If you're a writer, if you're a deep thinker, the prompt engineering is going to be a place for you to focus. You've probably already dabbled in that. But I think what I'm trying to get at here is that you want to double down on what comes natural to you and not feel like you need to become a coder or that you need to change what is already naturally uh, working for you. So other places, if you do have some of that technical ability, technical know-how, look into these low-code or no-code platforms. So think about how you can build these different AI assistants for both internal and external use cases. Uh, some that are really coming on the scene fast are custom GPT, BotPress, Stack AI, Agent GPT, FlowWise. These are popping up everywhere. So these might be some tools you want to get familiar with. Zapier is going to be a huge one as well. Take a look at all the integrations that you might be able to use Zapier for. And if you're a really technical coder, um, you know, think about Mojo. That is a new programming language that is coming on the scenes. It's built on top of Python. Obviously, you want to get familiar with OpenAI's API, Langchain, Pinecone, all the different vector database softwares that are coming out. And those are going to be places for you to look when you are maybe thinking about creating your own ChatGPT plugins or building different AI uh, extensions. So. Here's a few project milestones. If you are brand new to this, you might want to think about just as a first step, creating some sort of a customer support chatbot using those tools that I just mentioned to just get your feet wet and try to just create any kind of chatbot that you can. Then a level up from that is a little bit more advanced using uh, some AI integrations, maybe with GPT-4 and plugging it into a custom knowledge base. A lot of those tools that I just mentioned can do all of that. From there, maybe think about an internal chatbot, something that can help you create content or that can help you do different types of business analysis. 
And then from there, you know, the sky's kind of the real limit. You want to then look at your business and audit your business from uh, various perspectives and get a feel for what you might be able to automate in the future. So I hope you got something out of this. The whole uh, economy is about to change and this AI automation engineering is going to be huge. So really think about how your personality and your different natural abilities can plug into this new world. I have all of this in a PDF cheat sheet with tons of resources that I came across while making this video. I also have links to all of the different Twitter uh, folks that I follow and different uh, email lists that I follow. That's in my Patreon for a few bucks. I also have some Google Collabs in there if you're interested in baby step learning how to code a little bit, learning how to use AI to help you code. Uh, there's a, a bunch of resources in there and if you want to chat with me one on one, I'd love that. Thanks a ton for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps as I'm getting this channel off the ground. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.